I recently programmed an AI for the game of number 9, and uh, I'm going to play around so I can demonstrate the rules, and then I'm going to have the computer play the very same round with the same configuration of cards to see how the AI is doing. I'll talk about how the AI works. So here we have 20 cards. They are numbered from 0 through 9. There's two copies of each of those cards. And um, we're going to draw them, and we're going to place the tiles onto the board. And the higher the tiles go, the more they score. I'll get to scoring and placement as they come up. So I draw a 5. And this goes onto the floor, which is level 0. Level 0 doesn't score anything. And on top of level 0, you get level 1, 2, 3, 4, and they multiply the scores of the numbers on hand. We draw a 7. Now, the 7 can't go anywhere on top of the 5, because uh, for one thing, it has to be on top of at least two different tiles, and for another, you can't overhang empty space. So we're going to place it next to the 5 somehow, trying to leave as little empty space as possible to allow for other numbers to be placed on top. You're allowed to rotate, but you're not allowed to flip the tiles so that the black side is facing up. I will place it here. Two of actually here. 9. So you want the 9 to if possible, go on to level 1 to get some points, but that's not possible at the moment. So, we want to leave. So once the titles are uh, placed, they cannot be moved. See, I think about some other number that can go here. It looks like uh, a 1 could fit in there, or maybe a 7. So this seems like a reasonable move. We get a two. See, I hate to put it on top because um, there two is not definitely not one of the higher numbers in here. An eight. Okay, now we can start to get some points. So that scores us 8 points right here. Maybe over here to give it some space. Okay. 6. One. One. So it also pays to kind of think about what numbers could come up later. So it looks like an eight or a nine could fit here now. Three. One of my favorite scenes in uh, Dumb and Dumber 2 is when Travis is asking... Uh, uh, Harry and Lloyd, uh, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 3. Whoever guesses it gets to be king of the car. And I think uh, Lloyd says 1, Travis says no, and then Harry follows it with 3, no. And then Lloyd goes, well, what was it? And then Travis uh, very casually says 2, and then uh, Lloyd says, no, oh, I was going to say that. Alright, so now we have some room for another number here. Two. Nine. 
Let's think about that. We got an 8 and a 7. I hope to put something on level 2. I guess that's the only logical place. A 6. Okay, so either 7 or 8 could fit on here. Now let's see if we can arrange this to make room for something else. Uh, over he here, 3 could then fit. Could 3 fit there if 6 went there? Yeah. Okay, so hopefully we draw 3 before anything else. That will give us room to put even more numbers on level 2. 0. Um, over here would, no, that wouldn't give us any room for something there. I think that's the only place that buys us any extra room. So, maybe a four could go here now. Four, in Chinese, four is an unlucky number because it sounds like the word for death. Four. Let's see, if four goes here, then the seven could potentially... No, seven can't go on top later. How about if it went this direction? Oh, right here. Yeah, it's helpful to remember what tiles you have left. And that's why the AI does pretty well, because it can take all of that into consideration. I'll talk about that in a second. Seven, good. Seven, and then the eight could go here, and then potentially a five. Five. Oh, I wanted to draw the five after, after the eight. Well, at least that three could go on top later. Do I want to do that? That wouldn't leave room for the eight. Unless... Yeah, I don't want to do that. Okay, so it sounds like the 8 and the 3 can both go on to uh, level 2 now. Eight doesn't really matter because 3 is going to fit on 3 and then it says 0. It doesn't really matter where that goes. Okay, so let's score. All of these titles get worth double. So we have 18 times 2 is 36. 40, 48, 53, 62, 68. I'm a little bit surprised at how well I did. So with the same arrangement of cards, let's see how my AI does. Okay, so it's asking us to enter cards. We enter a 5. So I scored 68 points, right? Okay, so the 5 goes on to level 0, we draw a 7, that looks very different from how I placed it, let's see, my level 0 is down here, I think that was level 2, this was my level 0, so it places the 7, that makes sense, it gives it some room in between here. 
a nine. So it's expecting a score of 62. Obviously doesn't know the rest of the configurations of the cards. Two. So how does this work? So it's evaluating the configuration of the board at the moment, taking into account a bunch of stuff. Oh, the score jumped a lot. So that was apparently a good draw because that two fits in there. So it's got to take into account the structure of the current position and the cards that are about to come up, right? And so it's a giant mathematical function of binary zeros and ones of which cells are occupied to what I expect the score to go to. So once you have that kind of a structure, you construct a neural network and then you can play lots of rounds to simulate and to learn that neural network, right? So for example, it figures out that a move later, that eight could potentially go on top, and this position has whatever value. It learns that the previous position should have had a value of this. And it plays, well, about a right now as I currently speak it has learned about a billion rounds or so that's a six and then at the very end obviously it knows the exact score right so it's uh, learning what what's what kind of position does the position I have on hand transition to what score does it has have and it backward learns that right a one and then once you have an evaluation function, you can even think a few moves ahead. Right? My program thinks two moves ahead. It's a little bit harder to think more than two moves ahead. The reason being that the branching factor, right? Not only are there potentially uh, dozens of choices per move, there's also 10 different cards you could draw. So whatever number of legal moves times 10 times however many number of legal moves, right? One... Right now it's expecting a score of 65. So the computer uh, considered a total of about 154,000 different positions. A three. By the way, um, I've never seen any titles go above level 3, and neither has my AI apparently. It's never simulated a game where titles went on to level 4. It's possible. I mean, there are configurations where it goes there. It probably doesn't result from optimal play, though, right? Because um, if you're shooting for something to go on to uh, level 4, you're probably compromising the rest of your position in order to gamble on the idea that that might work out, right? That's my guess, at least. That's probably why the computer has never seen it. Draw two. And I'm always amazed at how quickly the computer scores points at the very end. It looks like it. by the time we got to this position, I think I've already scored 20 or so points. Uh, but usually the computer scores 40, 50, 60 points at the very end in rapid succession. We'll see that in a second. And it's thinking 187,000 uh, positions. See how see how a strong, solid base it built. No holes so far. It draws a nine. Here's when it's really going to take off. It's probably going to put that nine on level one, and it's going to have a very strong base to put uh, titles onto level uh, two. Uh, I'd say the computer gets to level 3 pretty often, actually, but never to level 4, which is what really surprises me. There we go. So now it could potentially put the other 8 on top. 
a six. I hope to uh, to design a bigger variation of this game. Uh, it's nice to have the AI if you're designing board games so you can see how quickly or how much uh, you're increasing the complexity of the games. Uh, having the AI has been very helpful for me in designing some of the Shogi variants. Okay, so 6 was the first title it placed on level 2. And notice how the expected score jumped quite a bit to 69. So apparently we're drawing good cards. 0. I'm also always amazed at how well the computer can make use of those zero tiles. They're not completely useless, because they still have quite a bit of um, extra space at the edges that allow you to continue to build on top. So I'm going to guess it's going to put, put it next to... It's probably going to put it on level zero. But it's probably going to put it adjacent to something where stuff can go on top. Okay, so notice how... Now there's a little bit of space here for, for a three or something, and then potentially to build on top of that. We draw a four. I'm guessing it's going to make use of the extra space created by the zeros. I also thought about, uh, potentially, because this is usually a four-player game, there's uh, four copies of every tile, potentially uh, you could shuffle the cards again and then place even more tiles on them. I think somebody has done that. Um, it, 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 uh, the AI will significantly explode if you try to learn that, because not only, not only are you uh, increasing the length of the game, but the board size and the, potentially the number of levels explodes quite a bit. Currently, the amount of data being consumed by the uh, this neural network is about uh, about half a gigabyte so far. And uh, to make it uh, bigger by a factor of four, the board has to be increased by four times four times four, right? 64 times, potentially. Uh, would probably not fit in my RAM, so but it'd be it'd be an interesting uh, uh, to to at least approximate it, right? Maybe it won't play as strongly as this one. Anyways, the expected score is now in the seventies. Uh, a seven. I wonder if that can go on level two now. I also thought about potentially uh, having these uh, not just be two-dimensional, but three-dimensional with things sticking out. But that's why having the AI is nice, because I can test out how, how much it increases the complexity and uh, playability of the game, right? How, how, how much interesting would it make it for humans versus for computers, right? There are games that are easy for humans and very difficult for computers because they require quite a bit of common sense, right? Uh, there's a chess variant called Arama. I hope to compete in that next year. It's very difficult for computers because the branching factor explodes on you, but humans don't look at all the possible moves, right? An eight. I believe that could go on... Does it go on level uh, three? No, it doesn't. Expected score of 81 now. A three. That one on level three, there we go. And then a zero, and the computer scored an 81. Let's see what it did. It placed the three on level four. There were three titles on level, or level three, and then three titles at level two, and then level one had one, two, three, four, five titles, and then the rest were at level zero. Anyway, uh, this is, I would say uh, number nine is probably, uh, I would say it's the, the strongest number nine computer program is probably going to be on par with humans. The reason being that it does have a, a significant branching factor, right? Because not only are you drawing cards, but your titles often have dozens of places to go. 
But at the same time, there's a lot of symmetry the computer can make use of, right? Once your tiles are already on the board, it really doesn't matter which tile is occupying which. So the that simplifies the neural network considerably. I hope there's some interest in programming it because I, I hope to compete uh, against other AIs. I haven't seen any other AI online, though. It's, been, it's a very popular game in the area where I live, so hopefully others will come.